And this is using the chrysanthemum stamp. So this is the chrysanthemum stamp. And I originally did this piece live on my page in two different days. Hey, Linda. And we're going to do that, recreate it here. I'm going to do things a couple things a little bit differently and see what I think. But um, I was super excited about how this works. So I'm going to show you how to get this look. There we go. So here's the overview. I took a board. This is a 12 by 18 inch um, sheet of interior sanded plywood, three quarter inch thick. And I used um, IOD air dry clay on this section right here. And then I took sections of the chrysanthemum stamp and impressed it into the clay. I did a wash with black, wanting that to really stick in the recesses where the sections of the stamp are. And then I mirrored that in the opposite color scheme on the other side. So that's what I did. I'm gonna show you this part on a scrap piece of wood and then I have a smaller piece like this at the intermediate step so you guys can see the whole process and we don't run out of time. So let's get started. I'm just starting with a small piece of board here. And I'm going to show you how I did the left side of that board. Thanks, you guys, so much for the heart. So appreciated. So I think I can move in a little bit here. Oh, and I just saw my header and I spelt sweet and sassy treasures wrong, but I've been having so much trouble with Facebook that um, I always have to go on live and stop and go back in. It's crazy. I took my board and I painted it in a coat of white paint. Any paint would work. Wouldn't matter for this stuff. If it has built-in sealer, doesn't have built-in sealer, mineral base, not mineral base, wouldn't matter. Then I'm gonna take some air dry clay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you just how I do an impression. So I'm gonna cover a section of this board with the air dry clay. What I do is I use my brayer as a rolling pin. This is my um, favorite brayer. I have like three of them go on my IOD brayer. With clay, I'm just going to use this cheap one that I happen to have. You could use a rolling pin. I'll take a sheet of parchment paper. This one's very well loved. And I will roll my clay out on the parchment paper. I'm sure that there are other ways. I don't have the supplies in Chile. Oh. Tony, hi Tony from Colorado. So I'm going to take just a round circle of the clay and I'm going to smush it out onto my parchment paper. You don't need a thick amount of clay. This clay is so wonderful that the last thing I want to do is waste it and not have it for one of my Sid Dickens tiles. I'd be crushed. So now I just think of like using a rolling pin. I am going to, I am not, I'm a baker, but I don't like, well, I haven't baked in a long time. Who am I kidding? I have never rolled out dough, but my mom I watched her when I was younger, and she would dust her rolling pin with flour. So we're just gonna dust the brayer with cornstarch. And then it just makes it so it doesn't stick. And I'm just gonna continue to roll this out. It just broke right there. No big deal, just adds more character. And I would use as big of a piece as I thought I'd, I'd need. When I did my original one, and even the one that we're doing today, I did it in sections. So 
it's not it's not thick if you can see so then I just take I've had questions do you have to glue the clay down and I can tell you that there are times that I've thought I didn't need to glue it down that the clay would stick onto my wood and it didn't withstand the test of time so I just take the couple of extra seconds and glue it down so I'm using tight bond quick and thick and I like to cover the whole thing so it sticks well just get a nice coat on there if I miss your questions you guys I will circle back to them so I'm just gonna put this right here and I didn't roll out a big enough piece but I'm going to show you why that doesn't matter so I'm going to grab another little piece I'm not going to do this whole board because I'm, I'm probably not going to use this for anything and I don't really want to waste it so I know that when I did my original piece, I wanted it to do this, kind of be narrower on this side and longer on that side. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I do this next one. And just a nice thin coat. The thicker it is, the longer it's going to take to dry, which is going to keep you from doing your next couple of steps. So I'm just rolling that out. Take my tight bond quick and thick. A little thicker in this section right in the middle here it does not matter this is not like an exact science other than not wanting to waste the clay it doesn't make that much of a difference so let's see I'm just gonna have it go in there and let's say that looking for oh here it's one you know I, I don't want it to go that far over so I'm just gonna slice that piece maybe I'll bring it into this section and what I don't want to happen is to have abrupt edges on here So I'm going to take my brayer again, I'm going to dust it because now I've got glue on here and I don't want it to stick. You can see why I don't use my good brayer. I don't think it would matter, but, and then I'll just roll it out even while it's still on here and that helps smooth out where maybe you matched up your clay. Let's roll it out thinner. So the other thing that I paid attention to were my edges. I'm trying to see how this lighting is. This is gonna help or not. So what I did, I'm going to turn off the light, you guys. Hold on one second. What I wouldn't give for natural light in my studio area. Okay, so I don't want these abrupt edges. So I just take my finger and just blend them. 
you know, that's not something that you would have to do. That's just a me kind of thing. And it's just going to make that background look like it's less purposeful and more worn over time. So I'm just blending those edges in. does not have to be perfect. Now the fun part. Um, I have a smaller board, so I can't use my big, large stamp. So let's, I want, let's say I just want to get some elements from this one, this fun, like, swooshy part. I am going to use some cornstarch on here. It just makes it a little bit easier to lift off. You don't have to. And I'm just going to put... And now... I'm going to press it down and I really want to make sure that I get a nice impression. So I take my brayer and it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt your IOD brayer to use it here at all. But you don't need to like a lot of times I can make an impression good enough just by pressing on it. The thicker the clay, the deeper your impression. And this is what you get. I'm gonna let the camera catch up. I know we're getting glare. Isn't that so cool? So then I just keep going. So move this over. Um, I'm gonna wanna build, sorry, I've got there are a lot of pieces to this. It's so awesome. So this is, this one right here, I love, but I would want it to be um, a little bit different shape than the one that I've already used. So maybe going in a different direction. Let's see here. My hands are so full of stuff. You know, you've got these, which are fun. I love this one. Oh, uh, let's just, let's just do a leaf. Because you, you'll get the idea of what I'm doing. So I'm just going to bring a leaf off here. So I'm just pushing it down. I'll show you how easy this works without using the brayer. Now this one I did not dust. And you can see I still don't have any issues. I get a really pretty impression. One of the things that I'm doing on the piece that you're going to see today is going off of my clay area. And that to me is what really makes the difference. So like what I'm going to do right here, there is not much clay in this area but I'm gonna take this stamp and I'm gonna impress what I can and then I will continue this piece with paint. So that's all I got, this little section right here. So once I do the wash, you're gonna see, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to paint the rest of it. So right now, that's how I do that step. So I've got that part done. I used um, a bigger element here. I used a smaller one here, some leaves here, and then a smaller element there. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to do a wash. And that's how I'm gonna get 
There's only going to be a little bit of drying time today. So this is a, um, a soft black, if there is such a thing. And when I do a wash, I cheat kind of and I just add the water right to my plate. That allows me to be able to vary the intensity that I get. And I'm going to use one of my smaller brushes. And what I'm looking for is I want the black paint to get into the crevices. That's what I'm wanting here. So I'm more dabbing into those low points because I'm going to wipe back the high points. So the side with the clay, the background is white with black flowers, so to speak. And then the other side is black with white flowers. So white with black and black with white. So I'm going to take my heat gun. It will dry very quickly. So now I'm just going to wipe back and I am intentionally trying to get the paint off of the high areas. And I just want the black paint for the most part to stay in the low areas. My clay isn't even when I roll it out. Um, I, I want that to happen because then I get some variation in those high points. So right here is a spot that I was talking to you about where it's closer together, you still get definition, but not like you do in the parts where the stamp is more separated. So I just took my fingernail and scraped across the clay accidentally, and it, it really looks really cool. Now I'm really gonna focus on this outside area. I will continue with this to get it as white as I'd like it to be. So I just want to kind of get off this edge to where I'm going to build. So the, one of the things that's just a little thing I'm going to do different is I'm actually going to hit a little bit of this side, which I didn't on my other one. I left it pretty well covered, but I'm just going to blend that in like that. I think that might be kind of fun. So now it's building. I have to try to remember which pieces I used and match them up. So I know I used that one. Yes. 
So this one went here and this one went here. And I don't think I'm going to need to use a mask. And then I have a leaf, not this leaf, this leaf. Okay, I'm going to start with, I'm going to start by building off where I was. So I intentionally put half on the clay, half off the clay. I'm going to use my same white base coat. So I'm going to get paint on the entire stamp. On my live yesterday, I did this a little bit differently and then I changed it up as I went along and I really liked it because I got another dimension. So you want to get just enough paint on your brayer to cover it without it dripping. So I coat it once and then I hit it again. If you're using them um, repeatedly on the same project, I find you don't need to do that. And I'm going to try and line this up with where it was originally. And then I'm going to press it down. I like to use like a paper towel because my hands get sticky. I'm shifting a little bit and it's hard not to because you're on clay. And that's how you get the transition. So now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. But I like where the white goes over the other part. It just adds another dimension. So I'm going to have to work over here. Now, I want to keep building, so I'm going to see whatever other flowers I have here. I love this one, so I think I'm going to bring this one in, I think maybe like this. I'm not masking because I just don't want them on top of one another. That's not the look that I want, so I'm going to put this one right here. Um, the other trick, you guys, is you don't want to have a lot of paint on your surface that you're using your brayer on. Because that causes, and I, I got a little bit too much on here, I can see that. So I'm just going to put this right here. Much easier not to shift when you're not on the clay with the different levels. I got a drip there. I could wipe it off, but I, it really doesn't bother me. Um, I want, I think maybe, I don't really, this isn't wispy enough for me to come into this corner. And I would, I would drop these in water this is kind of cool right there. I might just include that edge. Right like that. I like that. Um, and I don't know that I'm gonna add anything else. That's, and if that if it didn't wipe off the way that I want, I just touch it up with black paint. But I think I should be able to just wipe it right off. Um, 
we go. So I love this. One of the other things that I thought about was taking the white and going over these guys over here. Um, I don't know that I'm ready to do that because I love this so much. I like the spacing. I like the transition. But I think that might be cool. Really important what I think to mention is you're going to want to seal this. And I think that this is important, Judy. Thank you. Um, I spray sealed. Whenever you have um, contrasting, mineral-based, clay-based paints like this, if you go to seal, chances are you're going to pull some of the black onto the white. If I spray seal first, and those of you who have been watching me know that I love Rust-Oleum Matte Sealer, um, I spray that. I can seal over the top of it and nothing is going to run. So that's just, I think, worth mentioning. This one is only spray sealed. I could add, you know, um, my favorite water-based sealer if I needed to. But if you want that white brighter, let's see if you can see this. Because I've now let that really dry, I'm able to really get down to almost the clay layer. Where you're starting to see quite a bit of that white pop through. And that's going to give me some more cohesiveness with the stark white that I just added. So it's, it's playing. If I would have done this and not liked any of it, I would have just painted over the whole thing and done a wash on the whole thing. So you can't be afraid to try stuff because all you have to do is paint over it.